Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather in your presence and as the pages of Scripture are open to us, we pray that you be in our hearts and in our minds. Send to us your spirit of discernment so that we can learn to love you and to share that love with everyone everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It was an Ash Wednesday worship service, a liturgy of confession and forgiveness and repentance had been prepared and the congregation was involved in this time of prayer and soul searching. In the midst of this extremely moving worship service, the senior pastor was so caught up in the moment and in the, in the emotion of the moment that he fell to his knees, he threw his hands to heaven and he said, O oh Lord, before you I am nothing. The associate pastor, who was sitting next to him and not about to be outdone by the senior pastor, fell to his knees, threw up his arms and said, O oh Lord, before you I am nothing. Well, Ole Johnson, who was sitting in the front row watching both of his pastors so engulfed in this emotion, came out into the aisle, fell to his knees, threw his arms to the ceiling and said, O oh Lord, before you I am nothing. And the associate pastor nudged the senior pastor and says, Sheesh, looks who thinks he's nothing. <laughs> Arrogance, Right? He can't be nothing. We're nothing. And all too often in our faith and life, arrogance rears its ugly head as human beings. We struggle with this in our life, and we can see it brought forth even in our parable for today. But we have this problem that separates us from others. By making us believe in our own hearts and in our minds that somehow we are better than somebody else because of something in our lives. Pastor Brian and I were uh, in the staff meeting this week and we were talking about this and he said, you know, in a sense, this is kind of why programs like Judge Judy are so popular. We can look at programs like Judge Judy and anything on reality television, and we can look at their lives and we can say, well, at least I'm not as bad as they are. At least I'm better than that. And it gives some sense of validity to our lives and to our faith. In our parable for today, Jesus, the, the gospel writer says to us, I am bringing forth this parable. Jesus gave this parable to people who thought they were righteous in themselves. And he tells the story of two people. One, a Pharisee, a religious leader of the time. This was the per person who went to worship. This was the per per person who engaged in Bible study. This was the person who engaged in an active prayer life. This was the person who lived out what God expected of him. And yet he comes to a time of prayer and he says, I thank you, Lord, that I am so great. I thank you that I am better than that tax collector over there. And way off on the other side sat the tax collector by himself. Now, the tax collector didn't sit off by himself and wasn't pushed off to the side because he liked that seat. The tax collector had been pushed off to the side because of who he was. He was the person who engaged in, in bribery. He was the person who engaged in unfair dealings with the people. He lived an unsavory life. And because of that, the community pushed him away and pushed him off to the side. And it was him, in his humility, which is the opposite of arrogance, who said, O Lord, before you I am nothing. 
He was the one who came to God in humility and faithfulness. And he was the one who went away justified. You see, arrogance in our faith separates us. Arrogance in our faith pushes everybody else away when we think ourselves greater than we are. And we push ourselves off to the, we push other people off to the sides and we create this little bubble around us. And it takes humility in our faith to kneel before God and say, O oh Lord, before you I am nothing. Oftentimes we go through this parable and we talk about it in Bible studies and and you might be reading it in your mind and you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm so glad I'm not like the Pharisee. Which ironically makes you exactly like the Pharisee. Because we don't see that trait of arrogance within ourselves and we don't repent of that trait of arrogance in ourselves. See, we don't need other people to be arrogant. We can do it on our own. One of my favorite jokes. Man was stranded on a desert, desert island for 10 years. After 10 years, he had finally been rescued and he said to his rescuers, would you like me to show you around where I've been living for the last 10 years? And they said, oh, that'd be great. And he takes them to this clearing where there were three huts. And he says, this was the hut that I lived in. And this was the hut that I worshipped in. This was my church. And one of the rescuers said, well, what about the other hut? He said, oh, that's my old church. I don't go there anymore. (laughs) See, even within ourselves, our arrogance can create a separation in our own lives. We have to come to God humbly and acknowledge that we are a sinner We have to come to him and say, O Lord, before you I am nothing. And when we do that, then God can work. Then he can send us to the table. Then he can send us to the scriptures. Then he can send us to our time of prayer. And he can refresh us and revive us. That's what the Reformation was about. Martin Luther had gone through his entire life and his entire first part of his ministry and all of a sudden he opened up the Bible and he realized that what was in the Bible was not what was being taught by the church. And he said, hey, listen, guys, something's got to change. And they said, no. We might have something wrong, but at least we're not like those people out there. And Martin Luther struggled and struggled and finally he said he couldn't do it anymore and he went to the castle church in Wittenberg and he pounded his 95 theses on the door and he started the Reformation. In humility he said something has to change. We have to acknowledge our sinfulness before God. And Martin Luther says in this regard we reform our faith every day. We have to search our lives and our faith and find where we might be living a life of arrogance and repent of that sin and come before our God and say, O Lord, before you I am nothing. Lead me, guide me in your ways so that I can be molded and shaped into the person you want me to be. This is who we are as the people of God, sinful human beings who cry out to their God for change, who cry out to their God for reformation, who cry out to their God and say, O Lord, before you I am nothing. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of the day, 